Good evening, Mr. Pearson. What's yours? We whiskey. Better make it a large one. Oh, a present from a favorite admirer. Father Christmas gave it to me. Father Christmas, really. Have you seen Mr. Brody tonight? Mr. Brody, why ask me? I was wondering if I could speak to him without having my head bitten off. He's not here yet. Thanks. Leave the door open. I'm bringing the orders up to the club in a minute. With pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what she told me. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was a good one. It reminds me of the one about the gems on the bicycle. Oh, man, you're not going to tell that one all over again? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Well, now can we go back to that question I raised? Yes, let's get back to business. What about Gibson's suggestion to appoint a school physician? What do you think of my idea, Dr. Norrie? A school, a school physician. Mm. Quite a modern idea. That'll cost us a pretty penny. School physician. Try not to look at it from the banker's point of view, Foyle. After all, it concerns the health of the future generation. We never had a school physician, and look at me. I think the whole matter boils down to extra expenses. And we simply can't afford it with the income tax rising higher and higher every day. Thanks, Nancy. Do you know Mr. Gladstone has asked the house for another penny in the pound? Oh, yeah. Yeah. However, let's wait and hear what Brody will have to say about a school physician. Oh, Brody, Brody, this and Brody, that. And nothing ever happened in this town without Brody having a say in it. What is he anyway? Only a hatter. Not even a good one. Oh, sorry. Come, come, Grierson. Well, it's true, isn't it? No, let me go. Somebody might see us. Is that all I get after the fine present I gave you? I didn't ask you to give it to me. Besides, they're talking about us already. Who? Grierson. What's he been saying? It isn't what he says, it's the way he says it. That slimy tongue of his, I'd like to tear it from his mouth. No, don't say anything if you want to make it work. Aye. You leave him to me. I've had him as a next-door neighbor at the shop for 20 years. That's 20 years of putting up with his pride and vanity. Uh, another time, Grierson. Yeah, about that carriage of yours, Provost. Good evening, Brody. <laughs> Come oh, away Brody. in, Brody. Come away in. Good I want to make you a business proposition. I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. A far-seeing, practical, enterprising man like you if you desire a business appointment, come and see me at my office. What do you say, Brody? They want to appoint a school physician. <laughs> school physician? But why? The idea is to appoint a doctor to have permanent charge of the health of my pupils. Aye. Aye. Young Dr. Rennick has been suggested for the... Doctor. Rennick! Man, you must be daft. I expected you to be the last to say that. To the good of boys like your own that I've tried to get this and thing... And what is wrong with my boy? He's anemic. Rubbish. And over... When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. I disagree with the whole thing. It's ridiculous. And as to the health of my boy, you can leave that to me. There goes another good idea. Thank you. Now, which one says? You? <laughs> Give us a nice drop of gin, dearie. What? <laughs> Just as best as ever. What are you doing here? Why aren't you in Glasgow? Because I'm in Leavenford. <laughs> Wait till I get you a drink. <laughs> That's better. Don't forget my gin, dearie. Got a holiday? Well, maybe yes and maybe no. I'm not sure that I'm going to go back. You see, they don't really appreciate me where I come from. I don't drown it. I know how you like it. How much of the needful do you want for this? The written arms will pay for that one. Well, that's good because... Well, because nobody else can. Broke again, eh? Oh, so that's why I'm honored with a call. Oh, no, that's not fair, Nancy. 
I've come to leave them for... Th if you say it's because you were pining after me, I'll box your ears, my boy. Well, I've come to leave them for because... because I haven't got the fare to get any further. Now, you can't get round me like that. Oh, now, it's no good scolding me, Nancy. You know that you're the only girl that I've ever really loved. Well, why don't you get a job in leaving place? Well, what am I going to do for money while I'm waiting? Besides, good jobs don't exactly grow on gooseberry bushes. I've got an idea. I'll see that you're all right. Be back in two ticks. I asked her for a gin. She wouldn't give it to me. Hey, what is it? What's the matter? It's all right. There isn't anyone to see you. I just wanted to tell you that I can't see you tonight after all. Why? And I'm afraid there'll be nothing doing for quite some time. My stepbrother's come back from Glasgow. Your stepmother? Well, can you not get rid of him? You see, I can. You see, he hasn't got a job and he wants to stick around with me all the time. Well, what does he do? Oh, he does everything. He's a marvelous salesman. Mm -hmm. Is that why he's not got a job? <laughs> yeah, what is it? No, <laughs> nothing. It's just a word. What's on your mind? You won't laugh at me. Huh? Um. Well, supposing. No, you, you couldn't do it really, but supposing he was in your shop, then you'd always know where he was. Aye, then we'd be safe from any kind of surprise. Oh. Ah, uh, you're a bad lad. <laughs> no, you couldn't possibly do it. For why? Tell him to come and see me at my office. We just had to find out why she's always having those pains, that's all. But this isn't Dr. Lawrence, hat. He wouldn't be seen dead in an old thing like this. No, it's Dr. Rennick's. Here, I'll, I'll give you the brush for him. That's grand. But what made Father send for Dr. Rennick? Oh, he doesn't know anything about it. I sent for him. Without Father's permission? You must have gone there. Well, I asked him to be here at three for certain, but he was over two hours late. I'd like to have had a closer look at you, Mrs. Brodie, but... Oh, some other time, Doctor, perhaps. But better still, I'll come along and see you one of these days. Just now, I can't spare another minute. That's the whole root of the trouble. You ought not to do all this housework. Could you not get someone in? A servant girl, you mean? Oh, no. My husband would be like that. Well, that's my professional advice. Anyway, I'll give you something in case you have another attack. Perhaps... Perhaps you can come in for tomorrow, Miss Brodie. Do you think Mother will have any more of those pains, Doctor? Now, now, Mary, I'll be all right on the day of the ball. She's worrying about the county ball, Doctor, I know her. Oh, Mother, don't say things like that. Why, the Doctor might think you really meant it. Never, Miss Brodie. I don't know if it... Angus! Just look at your good trousers all torn and dirty. And there's blood on you. What have you been up to? Well, I, I slipped and... You slipped, eh? Oh, don't bother, you. Doctor. Got a hiding, did you? Well... Gave him some, too. You better go up to your room, I guess. I don't know what your father will say if he sees you like this. You better not come down to tea at all now. Away with you. Now, Doctor, you really will have to excuse me. My husband comes in at half past five and he's always on the stroke. I think you've mislaid my hat. Oh, it's there on the whole stand, Dr. Rennick. Oh, thank you, Miss Brody. Well, then, when can I expect to see you in my consulting room? Oh, I see. Uh, well, it'll be rather difficult for the next week or two. You see, there's Mary's frock to be made for the ball and... But we'll be seeing you there, so... The county ball? I'm afraid not. I wasn't thinking of going. Not going, Dr. Rennick? Oh, I thought you'd be sure to go. Why, everyone in Leavenford will be there. Well, the fact is, Miss Brody, I'm afraid I... I can't dance. I've never had the time or the opportunity to learn. Oh, you could easily learn the polka. You wouldn't find it a bit hard. All you have to do is... One, two, three, hop, hop. Why, what happened, Mrs. Brody?
Good evening, Mr. Brody. Dr. Rennick called, Father. I thought... Never mind what you thought. What are you standing there for? Come on, Mary, don't stand there idle. Good night, Dr. Rennick. I said good evening, Mr. Brody. And now, will you kindly tell me what you're doing in my house? Answer me, do you hear? Don't shout at me, Mr. Brody. If you want a civil answer to your question, I'll trouble you to repeat it in a civil manner. Well, what are you here for? It's not Angus, is it? Is my lad not well? I came to attend to your wife, Mr. Brody. I have my own physician, and I sent for him when I think fit. Your wife's very ill. She has been for a long time. And what are you making out to be wrong with her? I can't commit myself to a definite diagnosis yet, but I... But you afraid... wish to put her to bed, am I right? Yes, I do. Chicken broth and brandy, no doubt. Very good. And pay you for coming thrice a day to feel her pulse. Thrice a day will not be necessary. And you've got your own physician anyway. Any other suggestions as to what is to be done in my house? Yes. Your boy's run down and anemic. You ought to let him lead a more normal life. I'll have no more of it. Take yourself away and don't show your ugly face here again. Or I'll... Brody. You may like to imagine that everyone in Leavenford is in awe of you. Your wife and children are no doubt afraid of you, but happily I'm not. Understand that clearly if you can. Now, good evening to you. Just a minute. What do we pay you for telling my wife to lie in bed? Better keep it and buy a football for your boy. He'd be grateful to you. Take Feeling so ill all of a sudden. Dr. Laurie is the physician for my house. He hasn't helped her anyway. And the other one will. Am I right? Yes. Mary, this is no way to speak to your father. What are you yammering about? Are you talking or am I? How did you get to know him? The library. He helped me to choose a book. I'll throw your trashy novels in the fire. And you'll stay away from the library from now on. And let me tell you this, both of you. If you ask that young pup to my house again, or speak to him, or so much as mention his name, may God help you. Where do you think you're going? Angus asked me to take his tea up. He's got so much homework to do tonight. Good lad. Here. Give that to me. I'll take it up. But your own tea will get cold, Father. You spoiled my appetite anyway. And how did you get on at school today? Quite well, Father. You're still top of your class. Not today. Only second. What? You let somebody beat you. Who was it? Janet Grierson. Janet Grierson. That sneaking iron hawk as brat. What in God's name came over you? To let a silly girl go above you. No wonder. 
You've not obeyed my orders. You've been playing again instead of working. No, I wasn't playing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't playing. So your trousers got tore by mistake, am I right? It wasn't my fault, Father. I swear it wasn't. The boys were singing a song. They were making game about our house. A song? About our house? What kind of a song? Something about our house being like a castle. And you being only a hatter. Hatter's castle. That's what they call our house, Father. Oh. They do, do they? There's not a man in Leavenford would have had the gumption to build a house in his own way like your father has. Hatter's castle. Well, it's a house for a man to live in, just you tell them that. Yes, sir. Mm. They grudge us being related to the Earl of Winton. Aye, and for being better off and having more brains than them. Yes, sir. Now mind and see that you use them. You'll do double homework tonight. Yes, sir. We'll show Leaven for what my clever lad can do. But you'll need to stick into your work. Stick in hard. Aye. Then you'll be a credit to the name of Brody. Will you be in supper, James? No. You're never in the nights now. You don't seem to like your home anymore. Can a man not go to his club to meet his friends in peace and quiet? and yet dignified, featherweight and yet durable, and a most reasonable price, Sir John. Most reasonable. Oh, Mr. Brody, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Sir John. Good morning. I trust everything is to your satisfaction. Quite. I came in to buy one hat, and your new assistant is about to sell me a third. <laughs> Aye. I sent to Glasgow specially for it. I found that Pilly was getting a wee bit uh, doddery. <laughs> now, if you'll just try it on once, Sir John. I've shown Mr. Dennis everything yeah. you want to do. Just the way you want things done. And now I suppose you want your money and your character. You, you've no right to treat me like this, sir. After 12 years, dismissing me with one day's notice. We're not married, are we? Here. And I've given you a fine character. Sir John's going. You'll find another position. You'd better count it and see that it's right. I hope you'll soon be honoring us again, Sir John. In a couple of weeks, we'll have the new spring stocks in. And a you keep your place. Smart man. A bit too smart for my liking. I'll soon knock him into shape, Sir John. All well at home? Fine, Sir John. Fine. Good day. Good day. Good morning, Birdie. Uh, Sir John Latter. That's the kind of customers I have. 
Aye, and since you've been sneaking around all day, you may have noticed what kind of terms we're on. Well, you're a fine man, Brody, and you've got a fine business. I was going to make a proposition to you the other day, and you asked me... The boot is on the other foot. It was you that asked me. Well, I suppose this means goodbye, Mr. Brody. Goodbye and good luck. Shut the door behind you. Well, what is it? I came to make a splendid suggestion to you. Cut the cackle. I suppose you don't know that for some time I've been toying with the idea of retiring from business. Really? Aye. And the other night a grand idea came to me. And what is this grand idea? I was thinking that with your fine business, and maybe a shop that's a little too small for you, you might consider extending by taking in my place and making one big premises. And maybe with a plate glass window or two. Dear, dear. So it was to extend my business that you worked out all this in your sleepless nights. Well, uh, yes, that was really very kind of you. We've been neighbors so long. But I cannot accept your proposition. But if I did, I'd never cease reproaching myself for turning you out of your profitable shop. Shut the door behind you. Yeah, Brody, I'll be quite candid with you. I've got to give up my shop. Things have been going rather badly with me lately. And what with one thing and another... What else do you expect, you measly little iron hawk? And if you will, bring another brat into the world every year. And live beyond your station. Aye, and send your wife to the seaside. And your girl to the best school in Leavenford. And set about the service where she ought to be. Brody, you can't talk to me like this. Oh, can I not? <laughs> I'll teach you to meddle in my private affairs. And I'll get out! Brody, I wouldn't buy your blasted shop if you brought it to me on a silver platter. I have some calls to make. I'll be back in an hour. Yes, Mr. Brody. Calls to make. We know those calls. I'll make him pay for this. Would you care for a little help? I'll show him. Well, I feel I might be of some use to you in this. You see, I overheard all that just now. What? Well, I happen to know of somebody in Glasgow who for quite a time has been very keen to open a shop in this high street. Really? Yes, and of course, in a way, it would mean serious competition for Mr. Brodie. In what way? Well, uh, if I told you, I wonder if you'd consider a small percentage commission, say, 10%. I, I will. Good. Well, you go along to your office, get our little arrangement neatly onto paper, and then we'll talk business. Oh, my word as good as my bond. Yes, I'm sure, but I'd sooner have your bond, if you don't mind. You see, I have a rather suspicious nature. Lovely day, isn't it? And uh, what can I show you today? A present for the fiancé? A natty tie, perhaps? Or maybe a pair of kid gloves? What size the hand that is happy enough? I have no fiancé. So young and so pretty and no fiancé. I see that it's high time I came to Leavenford. Ah, your father's top hat's to be ironed for the county ball. How did you guess? There's nothing much escapes me. <laughs> well, mademoiselle, and what name shall I put down? Uh, Mr. James. James. W. W. Brody. Bro I say, you have pulled my leg nicely, haven't you? Is my father in? No, at the moment I happen to be the staff and the governor rolled into one. <laughs> well, in that case, I'd better leave the hat and call back later. Oh, no, he'll be back immediately. He particularly spent five minutes at the outside. In the meantime, Miss Brody, uh, won't you take a seat? Uh, Miss Brody, would you say uh, that uh, it was a particularly happy chance that brought you here today, or do you often come here? No. Oh, too bad. Never mind. It's never too late to change your habits. <laughs> uh, it's rather hot here, don't you think? Would you like to take your... No, thank you. Oh. Don't you think you'd better iron Father's hat? He's <laughs> rather... Yes, you're quite right. <laughs> Duty first and pleasure afterwards, eh? It'll be done in a jiffy. Mm. Miss Brodie, can you keep a secret? Well, I sneaked in here under false pretenses. Oh, don't get a shock. It's all right. I, it's not as bad as it sounds, but, um... 
I've never ironed a hat in my life. Have you? Well, I've been sort of born and bred among hats. Oh, oh good. Well, that does simplify the matter considerably. We all learn by experience, of course, though I have no wish to make my first experiment on Mr. Brodie's best top hat. Oh, I advise you not to. Uh, I think I'd better take it. Miss Brodie, would you consider it an impertinence if I asked you to help me fill this regrettable gap in my education? If Mr. Brodie found out, it might cost me my job. Oh, but he'll be back any minute now. No, he won't. But you said he would. Yes, oh, that was only just a ruse. Well, well I, I really don't... No, it really would be very serious for me. Now, how do we start? Well, we shall need the top hat shape off the shelf. Top hat shape. No, that's a cap shape. Now, have you ever seen a top hat with a peak? No, but it might look rather smart now you come to mention it. <laughs> this one? Yes, that's the one. Right. These two there. Yes. These two there. It's all right, it's only a customer. I'll be back in a minute. Ah, good morning, sir. Lovely day, isn't it? What can I do for you today, sir? A top hat, please. A, a top hat? Size seven and a quarter, I think it is. And yes. Gloves, you know, white kid gloves. For the county ball. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that we have your size, though. You see, we've uh, not got a very large selection. There's been a very brisk demand, and uh, we're almost sold out. Ah, here. I think this may suit you very well, sir. It's the right size, too. If you'd mind trying it on, sir, in the mirror. Thank you. There. Natty, if I may say so, sir, and yet dignified. I was out the other day when you called for those drops. Oh, I only popped in and out again. I couldn't have stayed. I'm afraid there's nothing very suitable in here, so though I have a feeling there may be something in stock in the next room. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, Miss Brody. I didn't expect to see you here after what happened that night. I hardly expected to see myself. It set me rather a problem. Your father being the only hatter in Leedenford, I had to choose between forgetting our differences or going without my hat and kid gloves. You're coming to the county ball, then? Well, I thought I might as well. Oh, I am glad. That's fine, Doctor. Do you not maybe change my mind? I'm afraid, sir, excuse me, Miss Brody, this is the nearest thing we have to your size. Oh, okay. Did you learn to dance after all? No, but I remembered your one, two, three hop. I'm hoping that that'll see me through. I wonder. Well, now, all I can hope for is that a young lady will get so tired of dancing that you'll want to sit out with me. Tired? Yeah, let me help no. Anyway, I'm sure there'll be a chance for us to have a quiet chat together. Well, that don't promise too much, or I might take you at your word. <laughs> them. Send them round to my house with the hat, will you? Oh, oh certainly, sir. Anything to oblige. Well, goodbye, Miss Brody. I've got some patients waiting for me. Goodbye, Dr. Rennick. And I won't forget it's an appointment. It's been a pleasure to serve you, sir. Well, I hope the hat's a success, sir. And the gloves. <laughs> What's a great gawk of a fellow. Oh, you shouldn't say that. Now, never mind about him. What about me? You going to say the dance for me at the ball? Well, I can't promise. Let's see what he will look like as partner, shall we? Father's coming. I tricked you. Gentlemen, on behalf of the Urban District Council, it is my proud privilege to welcome Lord and Lady Winton.
the Winton Arms is still looking after the bodily comfort of our local citizens. New earrings to match the brooch. Mr. Brody here? Why well, ask me? I don't know what Mr. Brody's movements are. Tut, tut, tut. It's only that I have a very interesting piece of news for him. It'll make this ball tonight something he'll never forget. Ah, Mr. Thatcher. Have you seen Brody? No, he's not here yet. And of course, he thinks the later he arrives, the more important it makes him. Mary, all the food. Come in, Mother. How do I look, Mother? Do you think I'll be... pains again? No, no, dear. I'm just a little tired, so much running up and down. Is it very bad? Oh, never mind me and the silly balls. Oh, it's nothing, dear. It'll soon pass. Come up to my room and I'll give you your medicine. It's always done you good. Where are my boots? How much longer are you going to keep me hanging about? Oh, Father, I was just giving them another polish. Wasted half an hour of my time already by your slowness. May I go now, Father? There won't be a place left in the gallery. Aye. You'd better run along or you'll miss all the fun, too. <laughs> Angus. Here. Here. Enjoy yourself. But don't be home late. You'll need to be on time for school tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Father. <laughs> What are you doing there? More medicine. No wonder my housekeeping man is always running shop. Dr. Rennick. How did this get into my house? He, he left it when he was here that day, Father. Can you not speak the truth for once, woman? I went and fetched those drops. Did I not forbid you to see that man again? Yes, I know, Father. It's all my fault. I'm sorry. Oh. You'll take off that frock. You do not go to the ball. James. Stop dithering, woman. Come on, we're licked enough as it is. Glasgow on some business he was making a big mystery of. Well, then it's a fitting image. Well, yes, it is him. Maybe it's a good sign him coming straight from the station. Is Father talking to me? I can only see the top of his head. I know. some champagne. Hello, Dennis. What are you doing here? How did you get in? Just influence, my girl. Just influence. There you are. Is that what they call champagne in Liebenford? Come on, let's have the real stuff and a bottle of it. Where did you get that from? I just pulled off a big deal and it's just a bit on account. If you're waiting for my daughter, you're waiting in vain. I can find it at her room and she can thank you for it. Come, Margaret. Good evening, Mr. Bowdy. Uh, good evening, McLean. Give me the bottle, will you? And the change. Oh, what is this? It's to be consumed off the premises.
Job's all right? So I brought the ball to you. The band and the buffet. Sweets, crystallized fruit, cake, and champagne. Oh, it's very, very sweet and thoughtful of you, Tennis. Catch! No, don't you break it. Well, how can I get it up to you then? Is there any way to climb up there? Well, you'll break your neck. Well, uh, uh, Oh, I tell you what, I leave the whole thing on the front doorstep and you come out and get it, will you? Aren't you going to throw me one back? Yes, if you like. Yes, it's the real stuff. I saw that you'd be left behind, but I must just come along just to cheer you up. This is one of your ruses again, I suppose, is it? Oh, but look at the trouble that I've taken just to make you happy. Rousing the baker from his beauty sleep and stealing my landlady's musical box from under her very nose. And if you saw my landlady, you'd realize what the risks are that I've taken for you. I know, but there'd be terrible trouble if Father knew you were here. Well, I... he doesn't. And he won't. Oh, how I've longed to have a dance with you. Let's have one now, shall we? Just a little one. Yes, please, come, just... Ah, oh, Mr. Brody, sir. Would you permit me to ask your daughter for a waltz? You're no but a miserable shop assistant. Ah, yes, but Mr. Brody, think of my bright future. Ah, oh, well, in that case, I might give you permission. Oh, Mr. Brody, cut the cackle, move on. And that. Uh, Dr. Rennick, aren't you? Yes. Would you come quickly, Doctor? There's a lady who's taken ill. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brody. Oh, just once more, Al. Well, thanks, I'm not as young as I used to be. Well, the dance seems a great success, Brody. Aye, aye, to the fine gather. Ah, Brody. I've been wanting to have a talk with you the whole evening. Oh, other pair. I was wondering. Are you quite sure you don't want to take those premises of mine? Did I not make myself pay in the day you sat in your backside at my office? Because if you did want to buy the shop, you can't have it. Because I've sold it to the Mongo Hat Company. <laughs> you could have sold it to old Nick for all I care. I thought you'd like to hear the news. That's why I hurried here the moment I arrived from Glasgow. You think that you harmed me. You, me. <laughs> On the contrary, you've done me a great favor. I shall be glad to get rid of the likes of you and your cheap customers. Mm -hmm. But the big people of Levon... They'll come to me as they have done for the last 20 years. Am I disturbing you? Not at all. I should like to have a word with you in private, Brody. <laughs> Lady Winton told you about our wee chat. She did. Actually, I've heard it said before that you claim to be related to us. 
It's true, we share the same name. But you can take it from me, that is as far as it goes. Pray, you mean to say... Everything else is pure imagination. But Lord Winton, that's impossible. Why, the whole of leaving for taking for granted that you and I are related? Then, my dear fellow, why not simply put the rumor to rest? After all, it's not essential to belong to the peerage, is it? What was the Earl saying to you all that time? Nothing in particular. Nothing that would be of any interest to you. Just the sort of thing that the relations would say to one another. Mr. Brody. Some people seem to have the hide of an elephant. You throw them out of one door and they come creeping back through the other. You dare. If this was not a ball with ladies present, Jump I... this. I'm speaking to you as a medical man. Dr. Laurie is my physician. So much the better. It saves me listening to your insolence any longer. This is Brodie's faint. I've taken her into one of the anterooms where she can get some air. And what do you charge for that? Will you try to explain to Mr. Brodie that his wife must be taken home at once? This isn't just an accidental state of weakness. I've examined Mrs. Brodie. Well, I know her state. She happens to be my patient. And yet you've And what is wrong with my wife, may I ask? Cancer. Advanced incurable cancer. That is a lie. There's the sore between us. This marks the borderline. Oh. No, Dennis, I'm me. Don't forget I'm a counter jumper. I might be a sword jumper as well. <laughs> oh, I do feel so queer. Did you put something funny in the champagne? Yes, the bubbles. It took me hours. Every single little bubble put in by hand. Oh, gently. Do you think I deserve just a little reward for that? No. And I'm not going to budge from here until I get that kiss, and I'm sitting very comfortably. Listen, father's coming. Oh, no, you don't catch me like that a second time. <laughs> Give me that. Get my hat off the hat stand, will No, not in the kitchen. Upstairs.
This carrying on behind my back is to stop. Is that clear? Are you not ashamed, you, a daughter of mine, to play about with that mealy-mouthed young pup? Who calls himself a doctor? You have to stay in the house. Not a step beyond the front gate. Don't be afraid. He didn't see me. Good morning, Doctor. Mother's upstairs. She's staying in bed today. I've come to see you, Miss Brody. Is it true that it was because of me that you weren't allowed to go to the ball? Well, in a way. Then I owe you an apology. I am most truly sorry to have spoiled your evening's pleasure. Now, I've no idea at all what my crime was. You didn't mention anything to me the other day in the show. When you... When you laughed at me because of those gloves. Oh, I didn't laugh at you. It was just that you made such a funny face when the scene was burst all of a sudden. I know, I know. I, I do cut a funny figure when I try to look smart. Well, I just came to apologize, so... Dr. Rennick. I... I only wanted to thank you for all you've done for Mother. Angus told me how kind you were to her in spite of everything. And I... Any other doctor would have done the same thing. You're not an easy man to talk to, Dr. Rennick. Whenever one says anything nice to you, you retire into your shell. Do I? I know whenever I want to say anything nice to somebody, I can never get it out. Well, that's all I wanted to say. Goodbye, Miss Brody. Goodbye, Dr. Rennick. No, that's not all. Listen, Mary. I know what sort of a life you've been leading here in your father's house. I can't bear to see you, Alice. Can't you see what I've been trying to say to you ever since I came here? Didn't, didn't you guess what I wanted to say to you at the ball last night? I want you to marry me, Mary. Mary, I love you. I want to take you out of this terrible life here. I want to see you happy and free and smiling. Mary, say you let me. Say you will. See, the old gentleman, so overcome by my audacity, he's dropped his sword. There you are. Well, Mary? Hmm? What's the matter? Mary, look at me. I can't believe I was that much mistaken. Mary, are you saying no to me when a moment I ago... I can't marry you. Never. It was only for a moment I... What? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, leave me alone. Will you go, Dr. Rennick? Please, will you go? We hope to retain the honor of your custom. In my case, it's a matter of reciprocity. Mr. Brody sent his boy to my school, and I buy my hats at Mr. Brody's shop. <laughs> but with this competition cheek by jowl, you'll have to work for all you're worth. Good day. Good day, sir. Thank you, sir. Good 
morning, Dennis. I'm afraid Mr. Brody's not in. Dennis, it's no good being angry with me. I must speak to you before anybody comes in. Why should I take the liberty of being angry with my employer's daughter? I'm merely a little puzzled, that's all. Ever since the night of the county ball, you've not set foot inside this shop, and each time that I, on some pretext, have called at your father's house, you've taken care to make yourself scarce. Yes, I know, I know I have, but can't you understand that? No, I can't understand. I thought we were in love with each other, but evidently I'm not good enough for you, and, well, I'm not the sort of fellow to make himself objectionable to a girl. Dennis, are you really in love with me? I think we'd better break off this conversation. Anyway, it's obvious that you don't trust me. Oh, but I do, I do. Only that I want to make sure. Oh, Dennis, I've got to tell you something. I came straight here from the station. I was in Darrock. Darrock? What did you go to Darrock for? To see a doctor, Dennis. I can't go into Leavenford where they all know me. Oh, I see. If you don't love me enough to marry me, don't be afraid to say so. It's all right, Mary, it's all right. I, I've always known we'd settle down together one day, and I've, uh, well, I've made my plans accordingly. I had wanted this to be a surprise to you, but I've got my eye on a little shop in London. It's going very cheaply, and I could make something really big of it. Well, I was going to wait until I had enough cash for it, but now, of course, I... Mary, I'll talk to your father this very day. Oh, you're not thinking of telling him, are you? Well, I'll tell him I'm very much in love with his daughter and that I want to marry her. You'll never agree. Oh, he'll agree, all right, and give you a fine dowry into the bargain. You can't ask father for money where he'd never give us a penny. Oh, yes, he will. And we'd go to London, have a fine house, servants and a carriage, and they lived happily ever after. Tell me, how much do you think he's worth? Get out of my way, you're blocking the door from the shop. I don't see anyone trying to get in. <laughs> ah, good morning, Mr. Brody. Nasty day, isn't it? What are you doing here? Well, I was out shopping, Father, and I ran short of money. In the middle of the week. The housekeeping money gone already. Uh, there. Not let it occur again. Thank you, Father. Ah. What's this? No business today? Well, uh, Thursday's a poor day, so we only start picking up about tea time. Oh, yeah, Marine. Uh, Mr. Brody. What is it? Uh, there's a small matter that I should very much like to discuss with you. You want the raise, I suppose. Well, that's one way of putting it. With all due respect, Mr. Brody, I should like to ask you... Morning. Nasty day, isn't it? Uh, good morning, Poyle. Come into my office. fine thing to do to me, threatening to distrain me, an old friend. Well, you can't complain about our lack of patience. The bank wants its money. Do you think I'm not good for a few paltry pounds? That's not the point. I'll say when I've got it, I tell you. You can add a few more percent to the interest for all I care. I've taken on a bit of a load with this house of mine. If you'd taken my advice, you'd have put up a good, sober, respectable villa, instead of running yourself into debt over this sham castle of yours. Sham castle. Aye, that's what it might mean to you. Just bricks and mortar and a heap of stones. But to me, it's the realization of a dream. But of course, you would not understand that. Perhaps. Well, what I can understand is that you live beyond your means. I will not have anyone interfering with my concerns. You don't have to. So long as you meet your obligations. Brody, couldn't you pay even a hundred pounds now? Next month, maybe. Well, we'll see. You were in difficulties before. And this competition next door will not make things any easier for you. Very well, then. We'll wait another month. 
Guten Tag, Bruder. Oh, Mr. Brady. What is it? What is it you want? If it's a rise, you might as well forget it. I've already done so, Mr. Brody. Would it be convenient for me to deliver this hat now? You can go to the devil. Thank you, Mr. Brody. What does he think I am, an errand boy to be ordered about with a lot of hat boxes? Anyway, I'm sick of leaving for a man's as good as dead in this place. Well, I don't care what you say, I'm not going to give you the fare, and that's that. What have you done with the money you got from Grayson? Gambled it away, I suppose. Oh, there wasn't as much as all that. It was enough to play the top all these weeks and forget where I lived. Oh, now you know that's not the reason why I kept away. Well, what was it? Well. When I first came to Liebenford, I thought the things between us were going to be the same as they used to be. But I'm not blind. Don't think I don't know where all this comes from. Hasn't stopped you trying to get your fare out of me, has it? But I'm doing that for you. I want to get you out of this. And I know of a little shop in London. It's very cheap and I could really make something big of it. Well, there's a little place on the first floor. It's very cozy and it's just made for the two of us. And what I had in mind was to get it all ship shape and then send for you and, and they lived happily ever after. years ago. He... Well, I just wanted to try and get him a job, that's all. The lie. No, he's never been here before. I promise you. And he's only come here now because... to say goodbye. He's going to London. As, as a matter of fact, I was going to give my notice tomorrow. You little rat. You go for a trip right enough, but not to London. You go to jail. It's, it's the first time I've ever heard of a law where a, a married man could send somebody to jail for, for being found with his girl. You dirty, sneaking rat. <laughs> oh. Thirst is a bad day for business. <laughs> and no one came to my shop today. And Gibson did not buy a cat. Oh, let me go, Mr. Brody. I can explain. There. Now bid her a touching farewell. For a stretch of two years. I advise you to think what you're doing, Mr. Brody. You, you, you might regret it. I, I, I've got such a thing as a tongue in my head. You think you could harm me. You. A wagon yet dead in its own. Tongue about me and Nancy. I do not give a tinker's curse what people say about me. Yes, but I suppose you do care what they say about about your daughter. You dare to drag anyone of my name into this? Your daughter wants me to marry her, Mr. Brody, and what's more, she'll be delighted if I agree to marry her now. 
And so will you, Mr. Brody. Get that into your sick head. <laughs> Step nearer and I. I'll shoot! You wouldn't dare. You've not got the guts of a louse. <laughs> Haven't I? Get some water, I'll bathe it for you. You know where to find me. He only said that to spite me. Don't believe him. Never mind what I believe. I pay you, do I not? taken a journey. And be quick about it. Come here. Get out. Get out! which you tried to drag my name. Get out! I'll get that fortiness out of you. Get out. Or I'll help you. You're listening to me for the last time. You're no longer a daughter of mine. I'm going to cast you out like a leper. And if you don't want to walk the streets where you belong, you'd better run so that you can still catch your fancy man at the station. It's a beautiful night for a stroll. Yeah.
That's what broke his last one, she? I wonder who she's looking for. I saw none of her people in the chain. I'll raise you two shillings. Two shillings and another two. Ah, none of your tricks just when I've got a good hand. I'll raise you five shillings. You left it a wee bit late, miss. I'll see you. Three aces. What house? Well? Father's thrown me out. Where are you going to now? I don't know. I'm not with you. So I suppose it's just a coincidence you're dropping in here like this. Please don't let me into it, Chucky. There's no need to get hoity-toity about it. I should leave that to your father if I were you. If you heard him talk, you'd think that he owns the whole of Leavenford. The truth is that he hasn't got a penny to his name. And you behave as if you were a princess, but all you need is a bit of coaxing. Stop it. It's actually your fault that things have turned out as they have. Before all this happened, you could hardly be bothered to look at me at all. And now it's not fair to ask me to mess up my whole future by tying a millstone round my neck. Well, what about it? What am I going to do with you? You needn't worry. We'll be getting to the Tay Bridge soon. You mean... Halt's there for a signal. You can't go out on the open track on a night like this. The sooner I rid you of that millstone around your neck, the better. For you and for me. Why didn't you call me? You shouldn't carry heavy things like that, Mother. Somebody's got to do it, Angus. Put that bucket down. Just think of your exam. And from today, you come to the shop after school and do your homework there, under my supervision. Is that quite clear? Yes, Father. My breakfast.
dreamt of Mary last night. I dreamt she was alive. She wasn't in that train. You and your dreams ought to be grateful that her shame was drowned with her. Where's the toast? again. Disgusting, the mere sight of this kitchen. Windows not clean for weeks. Whatever your touch is grimy, you should have someone else in this house. Someone with a pair of strong, healthy arms. I could do with someone to help. Good morning, Mrs. Brody. How are we today? Oh, for goodness sake, Doctor, it's you. My husband's only just gone. I get so terrified in case he might find you here. I've got it all worked out to a second. It's just like little man in the weather box. When one comes out, the other goes in. Now, what about these pains of yours? Oh, thank you, Doctor. They're much, much better. It's only when I have to bend down so much during the day. Now, that's what comes of disobeying the doctor's orders. You mustn't do so much housework. Suppose it does get a little untidy. What of it? Whatever you did, that husband of yours wouldn't be satisfied. Oh, please don't say anything against my husband, Doctor. He's promised to get me some help, quite on his own accord. And she's to come in this very afternoon. Wonders will never cease. Doctor, I had a letter today. Mm -hmm. You'll never guess who from. Perhaps I oughtn't to tell you, but... I feel I shall go mad if I keep the good news to myself any longer. Mary's alive. She wasn't in that train. No, Doctor. I haven't taken a sudden leave of my senses. They did go away together, she and Dennis, but... She got out before the Tay Bridge because... She didn't want to have anything more to do with him. Doctor, you've taken my breath away. Where is she? How is she? What did she say? Did she say anything about One me? thing at a time, Doctor. She wrote a whole page about you. What did she say? I'll go and get the letter. It's, it's burnt. I haven't got the letter anymore. But, but I've read it over and over again. I almost know it by heart. She, she wants to know what you're doing and... And if you speak of her once in a while, and, and she hopes you don't think of her too badly. Think of her badly? Why, she want to think badly of me. Why didn't I open my mouth before it was too late? I knew from the first what hell she had to live in here. I ought to have moved heaven and earth to take her away from it. I'm to blame for all this misery. I must go to her at once. Where is she? Wait. You know that she... she had a baby? baby died. Poor Mary. I must go to her. Where is she? She's working on the farm in... Oh, I knew it just now. Oh, what is it? In Glen. Yes, yes, Glen. No, it, it didn't start with Glen. I 
forgotten the name of the village. Now, now, don't excite yourself. Just try to think calmly. You're sure to remember it. No, I can't write to her. She'll think I don't love her anymore. We've never had anyone to help before. It may be difficult for Mr. Brody to get used to a stranger in the house. That's why you'd better take my advice and keep out of his way as much as possible. And mind you, never contradict him. No. They're trying to tell me that I'll soon be well again, but I'm glad there was someone here to look after my husband and the boy. Yes, and what are you doing? Mr. Brody would never have his tea in the kitchen. He's used to having all his meals in the parlor. Well, he'll have to get used to the kitchen. There's quite enough to do as it is. If Mr. Brody heard you say such a thing, he wouldn't have you in the house another moment. You won't send me away. Well, where did Mr. Brody get you from? From the Winton Arms. Where do you think they're going to a fancy dress ball? James, do you remember that day by the burn when you braided the red rowan berries through my hair? Do you remember what you said then? No, I do not remember what I said. You said that the rowan berries weren't so pretty as my curly hair. Will you take last leave of your senses? James, it was remembering that you were once fond of me that made me bear all that came later without complaint. I'm not reproaching you. Perhaps I wasn't the right woman for you. But believe me, you've given me many a bitter hour and many a bitter year. I kept my silence. Well, and what about it? There's something I cannot stand, James. You cannot expect me to. You might have waited till I was under the ground. I resigned myself this long while to what you did outside our house. But to live with that woman under the same roof, no, James. One of us must go. Her or me. Tea's ready. Come now. No more of this nonsense. Take off your finery and uh, come and have your tea. Tea's in the kitchen. What kind of a novelty is this? If you want your parlor tidied up three times a day, you'd better get someone else. Come on, now hurry up before your tea gets cold. on my mortgage. I've had a lot of expenses of late. My wife's illness. I... 
then her funeral. Boyle, you must wait a wee bit longer. This is only what we expected. That's why I'm afraid we've had to decide to sell the mortgage. You have? And why are you here pestering me? To give you a last chance. We have still the right to say no to this man we're negotiating with. May I ask the name of the new cutthroat? He's waiting outside. He has a proposition to put to you. If you agree, you can get out of this mess with a handsome profit. Will you see him? By all means. Let him come in. Good morning, Brody. Yes. Where did they let you loose from? Will you not come into my office? Why all the fuss? The first rush is over anyway. I'll come to the point, Grierson. I've come on behalf of the Mungo Company. They're short of space. They wish to add your shop to their premises. And for your stock and uh, <laughs> goodwill, they're prepared to offer you... A million pounds. No, they didn't think quite so much as that. I'll show some sense, Brody. It's a very nice suggestion of these people. If they wanted to, they could well put you on the street without a farthing's indemnity. You think I cannot see through the whole scheme. They want to get me out of their way. They're afraid of me. <laughs> they, with their waxwork figures, all they can do is to bait the small fry. Ah, Sir John Latter. <laughs> you see, the big people at Leavenford will always give me their cuts. He's pulled up at your shop, but he's buying next door. Oh, I'll smash you. Hold it! Get out! You have until tomorrow to consider it. There's not a thing to be considered. Rather than sell out to them, I'd smash my whole place. Oh, well, please yourself. Meaning of this? They thought they could sell me up, but I've shown them. 
Oh, so you're broke, eh? Broke. Just because I've no longer got a shop. Just because I cannot be bothered to sell hats for their dirty skulls. That was never a fit work for a Brody anyway. But I can see great possibilities. Aye. This is where you and I just begin. And uh, how long will it be before you can make some money? With what? That's exactly what I want to know. You is wait, buddy. You've forgotten your basket. Oh, no, I haven't. From now on, you can do your own dirty work in the house. You think I want to starve with you? That's it. You're not going to treat me like this. Have you no feelings for me? Feelings for you? After what you said to me that day? After... After telling me that I was no better than something you can buy? Well, if you want to buy something, you have to have the cash to pay for it. Why do you think I stuck with you? Because you're so young or so handsome? Oh, no. no money, no music. Goodbye to you, Mr. Brady. So, now they've all gone. No. That's still my boy. I. My boy. Why don't you come out? If you don't know enough now to win that scholarship, these last few hours won't make any difference. I can't waste time, Janet. I must win it all. But nobody will take it away from you. That's a queer thing. I know I could win it easily. If only I didn't have to. Nonsense. Come on, stop swapping. No, Janet, I must stick to it. Well, as you like. Oh, Angus, the exam papers have just come. I passed Mr. Gibson's window and I saw them on his desk. You know the punishment for this, don't you? Oh, sir, please don't expel me, sir. Please don't. With anyone else, Brody, I wouldn't give it a second thought. But I realize there's certain extenuating circumstances in your case. Oh, sir, thank you, sir. No, no, Angus, I can't let you get off scot-free. I'm prepared to overlook this, this lapse, but I can't let you enter the exam this year. But, sir, I hadn't read the question. There was no time, and the letters seemed quite blurred to me. I'm sorry, my boy. How could you, my best pupil, do a thing like this? I was frightened about the scholarship, sir. What would happen to me if I didn't win it, sir? Forgive me, sir. Please forgive me. Impossible, my boy. Maybe it won't do any harm for you to wait another year. After all, you're the youngest in the form. Give that to your father. Oh, who Lord of the downs are free? Oh, who will with me ride? Oh, who will up and follow me to win my blooming bride? His father, he had locked the door. And all was peace with it. Is that you, Angus? Come here. See what your father is doing. I got rid of Nancy. I noticed that you two were not getting along too well together and 
I wish to keep all troubles from you before the exam. Aye. It's downright gratifying for a man to see his own brains coming out in his sand. <laughs> People are sniggering about this house of ours. Hatter's castle. Let them snigger. I may be only a hatter, but when I was your age, I did not have the advantages that I've given to you. I could merely lay the foundations. But you'll get further on in life. You'll end up to be a bishop or a judge. Aye. And the king will give you a knighthood. And you'll put the second story on the house. And your son will go even further. He'll one day sit in the house of lords. Aye, and he'll put the top to the building. Then people shall not call it Hatter's Castle any longer. Then it'll be Lord Brody's Castle. And people will doff their hats when they pass by. Ha! We're going to startle the town between us. James Brody. That's a name that'll be on everybody's lips when you come back with that scholarship and a hundred golden sovereigns in your hand. Hi, we'll show him. <laughs> Angus. Oh, oh, Lord of the down so free. Oh, who will with me ride? Oh, who will up and follow me to win? you that killed him. You. Hatner's castle. Bricks and mortar. Stone. It was for you that I slaughtered all that I held dear. think that you've got me beat? No. Oh. For what I've built up. I can destroy! You do not believe me.
man we have just laid to rest had many enemies, and no doubt they were mostly of his own creation. James Brodie was an extraordinary man, a man forever trying to impose his will upon others, and in so doing, couldn't help spreading unhappiness along his path. He was a man made of the stuff of which the great tyrants of history are made, and like them, he met with the fate no tyrant can escape. But it is not for us to judge the deeds of men. Let James Brodie's fate be a warning that he who sows the storm reaps the whirlwind. And leave the final judgment to him who is eternal love. May God give him eternal peace. Amen.